Hi, I'm Imran Drosler. I'm teaching a course in the program about uh, leadership and conflict. The course deals with theories about leadership generally. That's where we start to understand the phenomenon of leadership. Why is it so influential? Who is actually influencing who? Is it the leaders who are influencing the followers or vice versa? Or is it all about the circumstances that are influencing uh, leadership processes? After understanding a little bit further what is exactly leadership about, we're going to deal with leadership in specific contexts of intractable conflicts and peacemaking as well as uh, generally changes in society while each one of the students is uh, picking up a leader of his or her choice and they will work on this leader alongside the course using the theories that we'll speak about and um, implementing that as case studies that they will work on in their final project as well. What I, what, I, what I want to do right now is to sum up what we did up to now, to try to understand where do we stand in the course, and then to offer you a general framework in order to understand uh, the next parts of our class. It will be focused around two, three specific contexts in conflicts. There will be uh, um, intractable conflicts and leadership during intractable conflicts. Then we'll be speaking about leadership in the process of peacemaking, or more generally during uh, social change. And uh, hopefully, if we have time, we'll speak also about leadership in reconciliation. Okay? But first, let's sum up what we have just uh, uh, talked about. So we define leadership as a process of social influence, right? And that is the basis of what we speak about when we speak about leadership. We said that it's an interactive process that, go between, uh, that goes between the leader and the followers, okay? uh, where the individual has to enlist and mobilize the support of others in order to accomplish a collective task or mission. And we spoke about different approaches to leadership, which I'll mention in a minute, the different leadership styles, the social influence, and, and today we finished up with, with power and gender. So we spoke about the historical development in the uh, um, research about leadership that started with a focus on the leader herself or, or himself. Okay, we spoke about these approaches starting from the characteristic of the leader, even the physical appearance, and ending up with much later approaches, which are still very relevant today, that speak about the psychological traits of leaders. We also looked at um, approaches that speak about the circumstances, right, and how different circumstances actually create the need for a specific leader, and it doesn't, if you go with the, with the most extreme um, of these approaches, so it doesn't really matter who is the one who is in charge at that time, because it has to be someone that will lead in a specific direction. And we spoke also about leadership, and there's, uh, uh, you read some materials from, by Micha Popel, his latest focus of his research is actually leadership as followership. Okay? And we spoke about also uh, research that is focused about followers and their needs. We ended up by speaking about leadership actually as relationship. A relationship between the leader, the followers, and the circumstances. We spoke about two main kind of relations that we can see between leaders and followers, the regressive relations that takes the followers back to their, and also actually the leader, back to their primal needs, uh, uh, nar nar narcissistic, narcissistic needs, and those things that we mentioned that it can actually bring to uh, uh, highly destructive results if it just stays there. We also spoke and mentioned about the development, developmental relations and how actually leader can, the motives of the leader can actually help in advancing the followers with their moral and developmental needs. And we saw how specific circumstances can push to either one of these uh, uh, relations between the leader and followers. But the main point here is that we, when we speak about leadership, 
we don't speak only about leaders, but rather we speak about this whole triangle of interactions between leaders, followers, and circumstances. And you'll see how this triangle actually also uh, being expressed in the general model that I will present later on. You can speak about leadership without mentioning the full uh, uh, range leadership model that speaks about different styles of leadership and we said, we mentioned that the same leader can actually use different styles during his or her leadership and we will uh, typify specific characterize specific leader as being, you know, let's say fair or transformational based on how frequent does he or she uses this kind of leadership style. You could even see, I think, that in, in the in the uh, speech of Zer Jess Jackson that you, that you just showed us. Okay? You could see different leadership styles just in these couple of minutes, right? Um, and we saw the consequences, the effects of each one of these styles over the followers, okay? What it creates among the followers and therefore what this kind of leadership style can create, what results can it create. But basically, as I said, when we speak about leaders, we speak about social influence and we spoke about attitude change and we said about these three components that have to fall into the right place. The right properties of the source of the message, which is the leader in our case, the right properties of the target of the message, which, is, which are the followers, right? And the right properties of the message itself, which uh, your presentation, which you spoke about, the rhetoric of charismatic leader was actually focusing on. But in order to create attitude, attitude change, in order to create social influence, there has to be the right, uh, uh, the precise combination, as, as I wrote here, of these three elements going together hand in hand. We saw that you can, uh, oh, and that was what I was mentioning before, those three processes of attitude change, either compliance, identification, or internalization, that each one of them leads to a different uh, um, depth of attitude change, while compliance leads to the most superficial one, uh, internalization leads to the deepest level, possible level of attitude change, and we spoke about the six <coughs> different bases of power of leadership and we saw that the more bases of power which are being used, probably uh, uh, the stronger will be the power to create attitude change and social influence. We also spoke about social identity and how social identity theory is related and connected to leadership. We spoke about the very basic human process of categorization. And we saw that through the minimal uh, uh, group paradigm and how even in the most minimal conditions people will create this categorization of in-group and out-group and that will not only lead how they perceive the situation but also their following behavior, right? And we said how these kind of other processes of depersonalization and looking at a specific prototype are connected to leadership and how a leader can actually create himself or herself as the prototype of the group based on the common identity, on the collective or social identity of the group and therefore through uh, um, building uh, herself or himself as the prototype and going through the depersonalization processes of the followers, how that can actually create a very charismatic uh, leadership through also social attraction and these two other processes of social attraction and information processing uh, uh, these two processes enforcing each other a long time and we said how can a leader that actually reflects as he's trying to express a specific identity can actually also not only reflect that, and they, that identity, but can also create change, okay? And it will be very relevant when we speak about peacemaking and reconciliation, okay? How can a leader that came up in the context of a deep-rooted conflict that affects the identity of society, how can that leader lead a process of towards peace, okay? Which is a drastic change from the way that these societies live for 
a very long time. Okay? So we said that it can be done through the trust which is being built in the leader and, and through that actually buying this credit, the leader can later use this credit and, and uh, um, potentially lower the le levels of resistance and, and uh, anxiety that are attached to uh, uh, processes of change and therefore will be able not only to create social change but to create that through molding, designing and changing the collective identity of society. Okay? So that was a short summary of what we've just spoken up to now.